Let us say it again. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to explain why I'm wearing masks and gloves this morning. We buried uh, in a big funeral service yesterday uh, uh, the Right Reverend David Reed, the sixth bishop of Kentucky. There were people from all over the East and the West, all over the world at that, that service. I was helping a minister giving communion uh, to all who were gathered there. And it occurred to me after, after observing uh, what we had just done, that I had put myself at, at risk and didn't want to put my congregation at risk. So to be at extra cautious this morning, uh, I'm protecting myself and you from the possible exposure that uh, we, we might have encountered yesterday at that, uh, that funeral service. It's something that we had to do, certainly. It was a wonderful, beautiful 
uh, service for the sixth bishop of Kentucky, who also at the time of his death was the senior bishop of the Protestant Episcopal Church in the United States of America. Uh, and uh, so we, we did that to honor him. The, uh, uh, we receive a report from Ed that he will, is feeling better and he will return to work tomorrow. He expects to, to do that, but I didn't expect him to come today if he was returning to work tomorrow. So, <laughs> so it's, it's our smaller group. Sometimes we call this Low Sunday. Uh, Low Sunday uh, is really a term that was derived from lauda, uh, which means praise. Uh, in the Latin uh, lectionary, uh, uh, and it somehow always the Sunday after Easter it was, it was a low attendance, a low Sunday it caught on on for that. But we joke about it in the Louisville area that the real low Sunday is the Sunday after Derby Day, not <laughs> not, not, not this one. So thank you all for being here this morning as we continue to uh, celebrate our Lord's resurrection uh, and. Uh, our service continues now with the readings from the Word of God. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Peter standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah saying, he was not abandoned to Hades nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks. 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 Our psalm today is Psalm 16. Please read responsively at the verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of light. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 1. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord when it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called a twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, 
I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord grant his blessing. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily and fittingly proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let us say it again. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. So today is the second Sunday of Easter, commemorating the second appearance of Jesus in the upper room with his disciples after his resurrection. This year, today, as last year also was, today is Easter Day for the Eastern Orthodox Christians. The Gospel account we shared this morning is a continuation of the Gospel account of the first appearance of the upper room last Sunday on Easter Day. At each of these upper room appearances, Jesus greeted his disciples with the greeting, Peace, Shalom. But sadly, there is no peace in Jerusalem and in so much of the rest of our world today. We are saddened by the continuing conflict in Jerusalem at the holiest time of the year for Jews, Muslims, and Christians. We are horrified by the daily news of the continuing devastation and death toll in the war in Ukraine. To this was added this last year the horrendous destruction, loss of life, and human suffering beyond compare from earthquakes in Syria and Turkey. We continue to be distressed also with the COVID-19 pandemic and vast wildfires rage in several of our states. All this is a challenge to us and it shatters our peace. Today's Gospel account is also especially about the disciple called Thomas. In today's Gospel account, we see Thomas as one who was not there when the Lord first appeared. Thomas said, unless he saw the scarred hands and the wounded side of Jesus, he would not believe. But when Jesus appeared and showed his wounds, Thomas overcame his doubts and believed. Great was his affirmation of faith because he had seen the Lord with his own eyes. Thomas' response was profound. When Thomas saw the nail-scarred hands and the wounds in Jesus' side, Thomas exclaimed, My Lord, my God. Jesus' wounds are more than a testimony to Thomas. They are the demonstration and the assurance to us that Jesus bears and understands our human suffering. The scarred hands and the wounded side remain. They do not go away. They are a part of Jesus forever. Johann Rota, 1727, wrote this hymn. I've found now ground. I've found now ground to lay my anchor 
where it's forever firmly cast. Where else but in the wounds of Jesus? Before the world and time long past, he laid this ground, unmoved to stay, though earth and heaven pass away. O oh, death, which by Christ's crucifixion did all sin out of sight submerge, he by his wounds cured our affliction and did no condemnation urge, while Christ's blood cries persistently and for us pleads, Mercy, mercy. Upon this ground, I will stay anchored so long as I on earth shall last. This I will think, do, and drive onward so long as part of me holds fast. Thus I will sing exultantly, O depth, O depth, of God's mercy. The Lutheran professor Morris Niedenthal of the Lutheran School of Theology, Chicago, Illinois, has made this commentary concerning the wounded Jesus and his greeting of Shalom. Moreover, it is precisely this wounded man Professor Nienthal says, who says, Shalom, peace be with you. So what does Shalom mean when it is heard from the lips of this wounded man? Certainly it doesn't mean the absence of conflict, of struggle, of pain and defeat. Jesus, the wounded man, spoke these words. But it does mean the presence of love in our wounded lives. The presence, not the absence of anything, but the presence of love in our fear-riddled lives. That's what the greeting of Shalom means when Jesus speaks. We may expect that his presence is to make us courageous, take away our fears, make us whole and healthy so that we won't be bothered and plagued by tension and pain. Instead, Jesus shares his own pain and wounds as a sign that we need not try to escape our fears and pain. We can share our wounds, our weaknesses, and our fears with him and with one another. Moreover, this mutual sharing of weakness can alert us to the signs of hope in God's promise of coming strength. Jesus responded to Thomas and with a beatitude that encourages us. He said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The majority of early converts to Christianity had not seen with their own eyes the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus, nor had they seen Jesus after his resurrection from the dead. They had only known the witness of other believers, and yet they were willing to die as martyrs in the persecutions that were inflicted upon them for nearly three centuries. They had seen the difference Jesus made in the lives of those who believed in him, how they sought to be like Jesus, how they ministered to the sick and the needy in his name, and how they loved others as Jesus had loved. The scriptures tell us I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And another scripture says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. Yes, 
we seek. Our prayer is that we may receive the promises that Christ has prepared for us. Christ conquered death, not only for himself alone, but for all of us. Because he lives, we will live also. This is what Christians believe. In this we put our trust. God did not make us to die. God made us to live. Hear what the scriptures say. God is not God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who by his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that never fades away, reserved for you in heaven. Let us stand and say it again. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious power. He suffered death in the grave. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Service continues with the prayers on page 389, form 5. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For our presiding bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, 
that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy for a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have for all who have died in the communion of your church, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all of the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Ever-living God, who strengthened your Apostle Thomas with firm and certain faith in your Son's resurrection, grant us so perfectly without doubt to believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God, that our faith may never be found wanting in your sight. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, you reach out to us amid our fears, showing us the wounds in the hands and the side and upon the brow of Jesus, your risen Son. Revive our faith and strengthen us now to be the body of Christ and enable us to show the power of his resurrection and his abiding presence in love by all that we do and declare in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the nation, and all the world, peace and concord, and to us and all your servants, eternal life in your heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, our God, our Lord, and our Lord. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I pray by the mercy of God to present yourselves unto the Lord, which is a reasonable worship. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God. Let your light so shine before others that you may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor.
For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. By his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
of God, for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Together let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us the living memory of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us in spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. God of 
he's to brought again from the dead the Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's now sing that Easter day with joy. 